Excel RT is a workbook engine to create and distribute a workbook-based product for a desktop, computer, or mobile platform. An Excel workbook can be converted to an Excel RT file using the conversion tool. Using Excel RT on either Mac or Windows, you can enable the builder environment. The builder environment can refine your workbook into a finished product or you can create new applications from scratch. This video gives you a quick taste of Excel RT Builder. When you launch Excel RT Builder, you're presented with a menu where you can open existing projects or create a new project. Let's create a new project. We'll call our project Quick Quote. We can decide uh, how many sheets and the size of those sheets we want in this project. Let's uh, rename this to Home. The second sheet we'll call Inputs. This sheet we'll call Materials. And let's add a fourth sheet and we'll call it Quote. And then we can decide how many columns of information we want. Maybe we only need uh, four columns of information on that sheet. And let's give this sheet 50 rows. When we click OK, our project is generated and it's opened into the Excel RT Builder environment. You see a set of tools for editing our project. You see we have the sheets defined here our home sheet, input sheet, material sheet, and quote sheet. And you can see on the input sheet, we have four columns and 30 rows of information. During the development process, you can save your workbook. You can open a different project. You can print the screen. You can set up uh, different simulated screen sizes for testing your workbook on mobile devices. Your workbook is stored in an XML file, but when you're ready to distribute to a user, you'll save it out as an encrypted ERT file. From that, you can create a protected licensed application. There are a variety of tools in the XLRT Builder toolbar across the top. You'll see a tool for adding new sheets or deleting sheets from the workbook. You can change properties of all the sheets. For example, you can show or hide the columns, headers and rows, the grid lines, or show and hide the scroll bars. Let's go to the input sheet and we can change the number of columns and rows on a sheet. For example, let's increase this to 10 columns by 50 rows. And we can adjust the width or size of those columns and rows. For example, let's take all columns from A through J and increase the size to 150 pixels to make them a little bit wider. We can also change the column and row visibility on that sheet. The copy and paste tools allow us to copy the cell value or any of the other properties of a range of cells from one workbook and then paste it into another workbook. For example, we uh, have some data that we've copied from the workbook and we're going to paste it starting at B3 and based on the data in our clipboard, it will determine the number of columns and rows that are required. And here we see the pasted data. If we wanted to add some highlighting to this data, for example, we could use the tool to change the font size and color. We might want to bold the text and we see that applied to this cell. If we want to apply it to a set of cells, we could go over to Now we have the whole top row where we've applied that font and size.
in color. We might decide we want to format these cells as uh, currency. So we can use our cell formatting tool and choose a currency. And let's give it uh, two decimal points and we have different styles. And if we wanna see what it's gonna look like, we can use a value here and apply it. And then we see how it's gonna be displayed. So once we decide what our cell format is, let's go ahead and apply that all the way down to D7. In fact, we'll, we'll also do this uh, column E since it's also in currency. And now we see the formatting has been applied. We might wanna put some color to our sheet so we can use the tool to apply color and let's apply color from A1 all the way to J50 and let's give it a background color of yellow. We decide we want to color this region a bit different. We'll go from B3 to E7. And for that, we'll apply a slightly different color. We can add a total at the bottom using a formula We'll calculate the sum of everything from E4 to 7. So we'll find our sum function E4 to E7, E4 to E7. And we'll enter, we see the calculated result. We need to do some formatting. We can use the cell data tool to give it a different color, maybe a different font size and apply a currency format to it. And now we see our results. These tools allow us to add, remove, edit, move, or resize form controls. Let's add a button. We'll call it Speak Button. If we want to change the display name just to speak, we'll bring up the Form Edit, Form Control Edit dialog, change that to the word Speak. We'll leave the button name as speak button. And now let's add a bit of script that runs when that button is clicked. So we'll go to our script editing window. We'll type the name of the button. An equal sign. And we're going to need a couple of scripting commands. We've got a help screen here. Help find those commands. Okay, we want to use this command. A command is just uh, the name of the command and some parameters and parents. So first we're going to give a variable name. Let's just call that total and let's give a cell reference and we'll give that E9. We need another command so we'll separate with a bar and the command is just speak and the name of a variable. So the value of that variable will be spoken. Let's go ahead and try that out. 539.85. If you want the user to be able to sort and organize the information, you might add a filter to the sheet. So we'll go from B3 to E7 and enable a filter. 
You could also overlay a region of cells with a table structure similar to Excel. There's a tool to define tables and all the properties. Another feature that's implemented very similar to Excel is the ability to do conditional formatting, in which case you can add as many different formatting rules as you'd like. With Excel RT Builder, a spreadsheet author becomes an app developer.